Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So in today's clip I thought I'd take a step back from the way I normally do these videos where I'm typically tearing apart a particular technology to explain the electronics underneath and how that relates to features of the quad or maybe I'm comparing two quads against each other to point out the differences and features and functions between them. What I'd rather do with today's clip is to try and tackle that impossibly difficult question that people ask me all the time on the website, what's the perfect drone? And that is such a hard question to answer because what's perfect for me may not be perfect for you. And there's so many factors that go into that decision that make it a very personal choice. Now, it'd be easier for me to say, what's your budget? What features do you want? Here's the drone that fits. And I can even put a list together of 20 drones that I think are really, really cool. But that's a boring exercise to do. And what I'd rather do is to take um, a broader approach to this and maybe define four different categories of quads that are out there today with a price point for each one of those categories and that way you know if you have a budget to spend because your son or your daughter want to get into the hobby or maybe you're thinking of jumping into the hobby and you've got this much money to spend you can at least look at that category and say okay I know I'm gonna buy this category of drone and then do some comparisons between the different uh, products that are in that space two other things before I dive into this too deeply the first one is there's a thousand different manufacturers and model numbers of drones out there I can't possibly mention them all I will mention certain manufacturers and models of drones just to give you a feel for what a particular drone in a particular class looks like but please don't take offense at that it's not like I'm a fanboy of any one product I fly a lot of different quads I'm really a fanboy of every quad if it flies I love it so um, I'm not picking on you and I'm not slighting you by not mentioning your brand or your model so please don't take offense at that don't flame me below the second thing and this is a bit of an editorial comment is around the, the permitting of the drones now it, it is a law in the states that if you're over 0.55 pounds you've got to register your drone I know that can turn into a political discussion it's a very personal decision on your part my recommendation is register the drone it's a five dollar charge it takes five minutes online and you're done because the worst thing that could happen is you fly one of these drones and you lose control and it crashes into a house or god forbid hits a person you not only have to deal with the event you've got to deal with the FAA at that point so for the five dollars it's just peace of mind and you're done with it anyway that's enough on that so the four categories of drones that I've come up with or quads that I've come up with are and I looked around I didn't find any international standard for what these categories should be so I made up my own I started with uh, entry-level drones and then I have what I consider hobby class drones. The next category up is prosumer drones. And then the top category is professional or commercial drones. I won't spend as much time talking about that fourth category because that's a very industry specific drone that if you're going to buy something, a quad in that space or a hexcopter in that space, you already know what you need because they're built to do things like surveying large areas of a property or maybe they're built for fire rescue or they're built for cinematography uh, endeavors like making movies in Hollywood and things like that. So if you're buying that quad, in that category you know what you want already and it's really not a decision I can help you a whole lot with because everything I fly is prosumer and down and all my friends as well so the other definition for these different categories I thought let me put a price point on them because a lot of times people say I have this much money to spend in my budget what's the best quad in that category so the entry-level products are typically a hundred dollars and less and you can get some really nice drones in that space for less than a hundred dollars the hobby class drones are between $100 and $500, and then if you move to the prosumer drone category, it's typically the $500 mark up to about a $1,500 drone. Above the $1,500, you're into the professional or, or commercial space. But in that band of pricing, there's a wide variance in features and functions in a reach. So what I thought I'd do, in addition to defining the categories and putting a price around them, is give you an idea what you can expect if you're in a particular class of drones. So let me start with the entry-level drones. I have two models of entry-level drones here. This is the Cheerson CX-10, and this is the Inductrix product, the Inductrix Blade product, both really sophisticated drones. I know a lot of people refer to this class of drones as a toy class drone, and that's offensive because these are incredibly sophisticated machines. Um, this one here, the Cheerson product, actually has a miniature camera in the front. Look how tiny that package is. It's got height hold built in, it's got four channels of control, it's got video recording capabilities. I mean, this thing is an amazing little device. The Inductrix product, from a sophistication, from a flight perspective, the sophistication built into this, this has what's called EDF, or electrically ducted fans, which are like Martian technology for drones. I mean, this is an incredibly cool drone. So both of those are less than 50 bucks. That category also includes 10 inch, 12 inch drones. I've seen some larger drones in that space. So if you want to fly a larger drone, you can find one in that price category. What you'll typically get in the entry level drones, the pros and the cons of it. All right. So the pros of it are that they're less expensive. So hundred dollars or less, not a huge investment. I mean, these are expensive toys. You want to make sure that you're going to like the hobby. You're going to want to fly it a lot before you spend a lot of money on it. So investing 50 bucks in a drone to fly it, not that big an expense. The downside to it, these typically don't fly as long. 
and they don't fly as far and they may not include a dedicated controller. So if that's important for you, make sure you look for that dedicated controller. Uh, some have cameras, some don't have cameras. So if you want cameras, you want to make sure you pick one that's got a camera on it. What I like so much about these, and, and you may not like this, but what I like so much about these is that they're actually harder to fly than some of the more sophisticated drones, because something like the Parrot Bebop 2 or the uh, DJI uh, Mavic Pro do a lot of the flying for you. There's sophisticated circuitry inside there that'll do things like height hold and coordination with GPS to keep positioning pinpoint accurate. These guys don't typically have that level of sophistication built in. So with those drones, you've got to be a much better pilot to take off, hold position, and navigate very carefully through doorways and stuff because there's no crash protection built in. So anytime people ask me, I'm, I'm thinking of getting into the hobby, what would you suggest? Start with one of these entry-level drones because it'll make you a much better pilot. And then when you move up to a hobby drone or a prosumer drone, you'll have those skill sets built in. So you'll be a much better pilot going forward. I also find that if you start here and you do move to hobby or move it to prosumer, I would hang on to that entry level drone because with me, I live in New Jersey. We're heading into the winter now. There's going to be a lot of snow and cold weather. And as much as I want to fly every day, I can't take these guys out in the blizzard. These guys I can fly in the house. So there's nothing more fun on a lazy afternoon to put up one of these drones and fly it around the house and annoy my wife and the dogs and the kids. Uh, and, it, and it keeps my stick skills up too. So I can fly it in the middle of the winter when I've got that itch to fly when I can't go outside and actually put a drone up. So I find most people that start here hang on to that. If you do end up in a hobby class drone, the nice part about the hobby class drones are these hold their value pretty well. So if you buy a drone like the Parrot Bebop 2 here and you don't crash it and you're not abusive to it, you can probably get most of your money back out of it if you decide to sell it later on and move up to a prosumer drone. So this is one I'd hang on to. This is one that you may want to trade up to a prosumer drone if you find out that you're into the hobby. And that's my recommendation to most people that ask me. I love flying. And for me, the minute I put my first drone up in the air, uh, I was hooked. And I've flown ever since. And I fly as much as I can every day if I can. A lot of people may not get hooked like I did, so they may fly it once or twice, not get as thrilled by it, and, and put it up on a shelf. So I'd hate to see you spend $500 on a drone and then not fly the thing. So if you do end up in the hobby class, make sure that you're enjoying it, then move into the hobby class. If you want to move it to prosumer drones, again, you can get a lot of your money back out of that. So what do the hobby class drones have? So the hobby class drones are a step up from the entry level drones because they'll typically give you uh, easy to change batteries. Batteries a lot more power so you can fly a lot longer. These are typically five or six minutes of flight. These can go up to 20 or 25 minutes of flight so you can get a lot of flight time out of these. Uh, I think the Bebop is around 16 minutes or 18 minutes but you can swap the battery out in two seconds and fly it again. These typically have longer distances of flight as well. They're based on Wi-Fi technology but a lot of the dedicated controllers sort of amplify the Wi-Fi signal through larger antennas. So with this guy you can fly hundreds of yards or thousands of yards away, whereas these are typically hundreds of feet away. So the limited distance is increased by moving to a, a hobby class drone. These also have much more sophisticated motoring systems on them. They're much more reliable. You can find replacement parts for these very easy online. You can find upgrades for these easy online. So this class of drone, the hobby class drone, the $500 and less, is really the category that most people end up in when they start in the hobby. If you're not going to end up here, you'll end up here. It's very rare for somebody to jump up to a prosumer drone as their first drone. Now, that's changed a lot lately because there's so much competition in this space and so much new technology coming out that a lot of the prices of drones that used to be here have dropped below that $500 mark. I can't believe it, but I saw the price on a, a Phantom 3 standard drop below $400. And, and that is, that's like a moon launch kind of drone. I mean, it's so sophisticated and you can buy that thing for less than 400 bucks. So you're buying a hobby class drone like the Bebop 2 or the, or the Phantom 3 standard that used to be a very expensive drone and very big decision on a purchase in that hobby class category. So you can get a lot of sophistication there. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about the hobby class drones are that some come with cameras, most come with cameras, but there is a difference between the cameras. So you may end up with like a 720p or a 1080p or a 4K. There aren't a lot of drones in that space that have a 4K camera. So if photography and video capture is really important to you, you're gonna end up in a prosumer drone. But again, before you buy this, start here and fly it a lot. Make sure you like it, make sure you're good at it. If you're gonna crash, crash this drone, or better yet, crash this drone. So when you get here, you're crashing a lot less. All right, so the top of the food chain, as far as most consumers uh, go, is the prosumer drone. Now, the prosumer drone is really the pinnacle of sophistication, and this is the uh, DJI Mavic Pro that I'm showing you here. There's a lot of drones in this category. The Phantom 3 Professional's there, the Phantom 4 Pro, the Phantom 4 is there. So there's a lot of DJI products. Unique is in there. Uh, a couple of other manufacturers that are big manufacturers out there, Autel's in there, that build drones in this category. What you're going to find here that you don't find in the hobby drone, so the step up gets you things like GPS coordination, return to home, crash avoidance, 
um, a lot more sophisticated flight cycles. So these have some tricks they can do. So some of them have follow me modes or they'll do circle modes where you can set it to circle around an object and film it. These have a lot more sophisticated controls, dedicated controllers, extended range. Now the differences between the drones in this category or in range are some of the drones in the prosumer space uh, still rely on Wi-Fi. So if you're using Wi-Fi as a connection topology, it does limit your distance to a couple thousand feet. It's not going to go much further than that because Wi-Fi isn't built to go long distances and it's also a very noisy environment. So if you move into the prosumer space, you want to start comparing drones based on the type of connection technology between their controller and the drone. Now I brag a lot about DJI because they've really done a lot of advancements there. So the Phantom 3 Professional uh, and that class of drone had a light bridge technology which was a modified Wi-Fi connection that actually gave you miles of distance. And the DJI uh, Mavic Pro that I've got here uses another technology, a new technology called OcuSync that does the same thing. So it not only gives you the distance, but it gives you high quality video at a distance. So when you move from a hobby to this, you're typically getting a stronger connection and longer distance of flight and longer flight times as well. So that's what you're getting in that space. But my recommendations in general to people that are asking me is, as I said before, start at the entry level drone. When you're happy flying that, then maybe move to the uh, hobby class drone. And then if you find you're into it and you're flying a couple times a week and you're really enjoying it, or your kids are enjoying it, then this is a great move uh, for you moving up because you're getting a lot more sophistication. But, but having that natural path of simple to more sophisticated to very sophisticated is probably a safe way to go. Now what's broken that paradigm in the last couple of years is DJI released this Mavic Pro, I don't know, three or four months ago. I couldn't believe the price point they released this at. So this product, and I've said this before and I know I'm going to get in trouble for it, it's about a thousand dollar drone. This should have easily been a fifteen hundred dollar drone with all the sophistication built into it and the technology in it. Uh, I think they left money on the table releasing this at a thousand bucks. But if you're moving into the prosumer space, this is right in the middle of the price band between the fifteen hundred and the and the entry level five hundred drone, and you get everything you need. There's very little you're going to be lacking if you pick a drone like this. So you almost can't go wrong in that space. But what again, what I'm going to tell you to compare is quality of camera, flight distance, flight time. Um, and technology that's built into it. Crash avoidance is really big for a lot of people in this space. The new technology that came out, this is crash avoidance in the front, so it gives you really good protection when you're flying. The new Phantom 4 Pro actually has five directions of crash detection and four directions of crash avoidance. So that one, you would have to really go some to crash that thing. And those are the kind of features you're going to find in that category. So I've gone on long enough about this. What I'll do from here on out is pick one drone in a category and do a review of it. I'll probably do a bunch of drones in each category, but that way I can spend a little bit of time talking about maybe what the Bebop 2's got to offer in a hobby class drone, maybe what the Mavic's got to offer in a prosumer drone, maybe why I like the Cheerson better than I like the Inductrix, I don't, but I'll explain why there's differences between them. And that way you guys can get a feel for what's out there and some of the drones that I like to fly and maybe some of the features that have drawn me to those drones. Anyway, that's enough for me today. Uh, as always, I appreciate the comments. So if you guys have questions on things I haven't answered, please drop them below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thumbs up are always good. If you're going to flame me, at least have a reason for flaming me. A lot of times people will put a thumbs down and I never know why they did it. It'd be good to know what I did wrong. And then lastly, please pass this around. Our subscriber base has been growing by leaps and bounds over the last couple of months. And, and that's really inspiring to me to see the people that are finding value in these clips. So thanks an awful lot for watching. As always, have fun flying. And the last thing I'll say is if you're not flying yet, buy a drone and start flying. This is the coolest hobby out there, and it's going to change things for you. It really is going to make your weekends a whole lot more fun. So anyway, thanks again. Happy flying.